The first reading is taken from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commandments in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them round your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favour and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honour the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 4 verses 10 to 23. I rejoice greatly in the Lord, that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is, more, is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Ephroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. All God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Jesus is our comfort, our shelter, our tower of refuge and strength. And so we can be content in my Jesus, my Saviour.
and now we turn to our, our Bibles again to Philippians chapter 4 and over to Tim. Back in 1982, a certain seven-year-old boy was utterly captivated by the drama of the Falklands War. And with my mum's help, I wrote the commander of the fleet, Admiral Sandy Woodward. And whilst preparing this sermon, I came across an old thank you letter in my box of sentimental things. Let me read it to you. The Commander, South Atlantic Task Force. Dear Mr and Mrs Laver, thank you very much indeed for your letter and especially for Timothy's very well written contribution. It was kind of you to write and your thought is much appreciated. I enclose a leaflet on HMS Hermes for Timothy. Yours sincerely, J.F. Woodward. <clears throat> that was the 30th of June, 1982. The letter to the Philippians is actually a thank you letter. A thank you letter that takes Paul four chapters to get to the thank you part. The Philippian Christians have sent Paul a gift, and as can be seen in verse 15, not for the first time. And Paul, accordingly, writes in response. This morning, I want us to see the way in which Christian giving, whether of time, talent or treasure, has a wonderful ripple or multiplier effect. A gift with right motives always has a blessing much bigger than the gift itself. We know this from our normal life. A thoughtful gift, even if it costs next to nothing in money, is worth so much to us. And this is so very true of Christian giving. It goes way beyond the gift and becomes an indicator of a precious partnership. And this partnership can be with those who are physically distant like Paul like Paul was to the Philippians, or we are to Mike and Vicky in the Lebanon, or the Charlons in Uganda, or Hugh in Cambridge. And the first person to benefit is the recipient, of course, and here that is Paul. In verse 10 he says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Paul is so, so thankful for the Philippians' generosity, but he's keen to stress it's not the gift in and of itself that matters, but the fact that they have given that gives him so much joy. Most of us have at least heard a conversation like this one that I'm about to give. Some of us may even have been participants. So, what have you got her for her birthday? Uh, nothing yet, I'm not sure. She said she didn't want anything. Tim, Tim, she didn't mean it, seriously. What are you buying for her? But here in chapter four, Paul does mean it, as in he really doesn't need anything. He is content. Of course, he learnt contentment the hard way. This is Paul describing his life to the Corinthians in the second letter to them. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have laboured and toiled, and I've often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst, and I've often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. But although he doesn't really need it, he is so thankful for this gift and his joy in receiving it is because they have remembered him. For Paul, it really is the thought that counts and their loving thoughts and prayers for him expressed through their giving causes him to rejoice. But then the blessing starts to multiply. It has this ripple effect. The gift rebounds in blessing on the Philippians themselves. See verse 17. It is credited to their account and it leads to the assurance in verse 19 and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. The givers also benefit from their gift. A sense of joy and delight in giving is theirs and we know this is true in normal life. That first Christmas when we have enough money of our own to go out and buy presents for others and we literally can't wait for them to open the presents we have given them. This joy can be ours in our Christian giving, where we are emotionally invested in the ministry to which we are giving. And our giving in turn 
reinforces that emotional investment. But it doesn't stop there. The blessing extends outwards. Paul says in verse 18 that their gifts are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. God himself delights in the giving. It is a phrase reminiscent of Genesis 4 and the story of Cain and Abel. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions, from some of the firstborn of the flock. The Lord looked with favour on Abel and his offering. Now I should say that nowhere does the Bible say that giving guarantees blessing, or that if we give then God will be pleased and somehow have to accept us or will owe us something in return. Christian giving is an overflow of a heart filled with love for Jesus that spills out into love and concern for others. Any other motive means it's not truly Christian giving. After all, think of what Paul says in Philippians 2 verses 7 and 8 about Jesus himself. He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. That's Christian giving, giving up wealth, status and security for others. But if our giving isn't an overflow of love, the ripple effect is stunted. But if it is from that overflow, then this is the fruit it produces. And we shouldn't stop with Paul and the Philippians and even God himself. There's two further ripple recipients. Other Christians, as shown in verses 21 and 22 of chapter 4, they see the gift and they rejoice that there are like-minded brothers and sisters elsewhere. And of course, it echoes down the centuries to us. If there was no gift, then no letter to the Philippians and no blessing for us as we read this book. Their gift went viral and is being talked about 2,000 years later in Bathampton. Our Christian lives and service, by God's amazing grace, can echo way beyond our immediate reach. My letter to the Admiral was my attempt to partner in the war effort. I like to think for 30 seconds it did boost morale on HMS Hermes. Our praying and giving to others rebounds in blessing to us, but also flows out to others. May God give us a greater vision as to how we can serve others, and may God make us willing and cheerful give us. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen.